black and white. I don't know about you, but I love a real punchy, vibrant, contrasty black and white image. And I think it can often tell a story way better than a colour image can. <clears throat> you could, of course, shoot black and white in your camera by putting your picture settings to monochrome. And I'm told by Adam Scorey, my techie friend, that there are benefits to doing that. However, I would always suggest you shoot in colour and then convert in the computer, simply because you can then save a copy in black and white giving you both a colour and a black and white option. As with everything else in Photoshop, there are lots of ways you can go about converting from colour to black and white. But there are three basic ways of doing it, which we're going to look at in a moment. Also, depending on which version of Photoshop you have, you'll have different tools and options available too. But you don't need the latest and greatest to get punchy images. This version of Photoshop is well, several old now, but it still does a fabulous job. More important than the method you use is to understand that when you convert from colour to black and white, there are things you're going to need to do to the image in order to give it that punch. You'll see what I mean as we work along. Now, I have already got a nice colour image sitting here in Photoshop of Chantal and Ben, which I took at their wedding about two weeks ago. It's a nice enough picture, it looks absolutely splendid. Now I suppose I'm going to convert that to a black and white. The quickest and easiest way to go about that is going to be to pop up to the image menu and then go into mode. Now there are different image modes. There are red, green, blues and CMYKs and labs and all sorts, but one of them is grayscale. If you click grayscale, what will happen is Photoshop will discard the colour information it has for that image. And it's even asking me on screen, are you sure you want to do this? Well, I am, so go on, get on with it. So there you go. That's a very quick way to make a black and white image. However, this image could be improved upon, even though it looks pretty nice. A lot of black and whites can look kind of misty, a little bit foggy, and you don't really notice it until you see your black and white alongside a more punchy version. So what I'm going to do is to save this as a copy so we can bring it back and compare it to different things, different methods, if you like. So let's do it, uh, file, save as, I'm going to call that, oh sorry, before I do that, if you use this method of changing the image mode from RGB to grayscale, change it back to RGB again before you save it. It's just good working practice. Again, this is a techie thing that I don't fully understand, but for technical reasons, certain devices want to know what your image is. By is, what I mean is kind of like, I don't know how it's made up electronically. Anyway, good working practice, convert back to RGB. You just go back to image mode and click RGB. Now it hasn't put it back into color, because there's no colour information there. We've just thrown it all away. All it's done is change the mode, whatever that might be, to RGB. Now we can save it. File, sorry, file, save as. I'm going to call that grayscale. So we can open it up again and have a look. Save. Cool. Let's just get rid of that and reopen the colour again. Here it is, make it so we can see it. Now another way of doing this is to simply desaturate the colours to the point where there's none left. And to do that you'd go into Image, Adjustments, <clears throat> and then come on down here to Hue and Saturation. This palette here allows you to play around with the colours. Um, the hue is, I'm not going to tell you what the hue is, it's about black and white. Um, but if you push saturation to the right, it starts to increase the amount of colour. And as you can see, it looks like a ghastly, badly set up colour TV in someone's living room. But if you pull it to the left, it starts to pull colour out. And you can start, if you push it far enough, you get to the point where there's no colour left at all. <clears throat> Let's just save that. File. Save as. You don't have to change modes with this version either, by the way, because we haven't changed the mode. All we've done is desaturate it, so it's still an RGB. So we're going to call this desaturate. And then we'll look at the different methods side by side. Go and get the colour one again. The third method is something called the channel mixer. 
If I bring it up, it's easier to show you in there. Again, it lives in image adjustments and then come on down here until you hit this thing called the channel mixer. This is a place where you can play around with the individual red, green and blue color channels of an image. But notice down here in the bottom left hand corner, there's a tick box that says monochrome. And when you tick it, you've got a monochrome. I'm just going to apply that because we're going to come back to this channel mixer palette in a minute because there's some goodies in here that it's worth showing you. But right now, let's just save that. So I'll click OK and save a copy. Save as channel. Good, good, good. Next, I'm just going to show you the difference between the channel mix, the desaturated, and the grayscale and to do it hang on i need a bit more room on my screen let me just get rid of those a moment <clears throat> if your photoshop doesn't look the same way mine does by the way it's because you can set photoshop up with different workspaces if you don't know what i'm talking about click the link below this <clears throat> which will take you to the how to use photoshop film on our site and that will explain about how you can customize photoshop to do things that you want it to do right here we go so here we go, here's our three different versions. Now I don't know if you can see this in the video, but I hope you can. And they're very different, aren't they? Each one looks different. The grayscale image is kind of a nice, it's got a good range of grey tones. The desaturated image is a bit dark, it's a little bit heavy, kind of gothic I suppose would be the way I'd describe it. And then the channel mixed image is more punchy and it has a... It's a kind of an infrared quality to it. If you ever shot on black and white infrared film a few years ago, this is a very, very similar look to how black and white infrared used to look. <clears throat> it's almost a translucency of the skin. Channel mixing works very, very well for some images, but not for others. But that's true of each different method for converting to black and white. Some images will work better using one method than another, and there is no rule, as with everything in photography. It's a case of you getting on your computer and playing with the different methods, and then you'll start to know through experience which one is gonna work best. <clears throat> right, let's get rid of those and go back to the original image again, because there's more in the channel mixer first. That I want to show you. If I go image, adjust, channel mixer, monochrome. Now let's have a look at these things. Even though it's a black and white image, you've actually still got the red, green and blue channels going on in here. It's just that the colour's been removed and the areas that had red in have been replaced with different tones of grey, as have the greens and the blues. And by changing the power of each different colour channel, you're changing how it looks. So like, if I start pulling this off to the left, what it's doing is darkening all the pixels that had red in them. If I go to the right, it brightens them. Let's put it back where it was, which I think was at 100. There we go. Oh, blast, I didn't mean to save it. Apologies, apologies, apologies. Let's get my history palette back. There it is. <clears throat> Image, adjust. Channel mixer. I'll get it right this time. Monochrome. So there we go, we're back in there. You can play around with the sliders to do different things. But look, if I start playing with the green, let's say I pull the green up a little. We're getting a lot more translucency and more porcelain like quality into the skin if i take the blue channel down slightly it doesn't have to go far it gives a different look to the straight channel mixed one i'm going to save that again as i'm going to call this channel come on channel adjusted because I've tweaked it. And if I bring back the original channel mix, the original channel mix one, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the screen here. Well, I can see it on my screen. They're different. The blacks are a bit blacker in this one and the whites are a bit whiter. It's a much more dreamy kind of punchy image. 
you can download all these images that I'm creating by clicking the down, if you're a member that is, sign in and when you watch the film, click the download link, you can download small versions of these so you can actually put them next to each other on your monitor and see what I mean by the little subtle differences. But if you're gonna do that, make sure your monitor is calibrated. If your monitor is not calibrated, then these are gonna be different on your monitor to how I'm seeing them. You're on a hiding to nothing with everything until you go and buy a spider and calibrate your monitor. You must be sick of hearing it by now, but it's true. <clears throat> okay, so that just kind of demonstrates that there are things you need to do to the image itself, little tweaks even after you've converted it to a black and white to give it oomph. The channel mixer is kind of a place where some of those tools exist all at once. But what if you're going to use desaturate or grayscale? Let's go back to the color version once again. And I'm going to use grayscale, so image mode, grayscale. Okay, and then convert back to RGB just because it is good practice. There we go. <clears throat> This is probably my preferred method of converting to black and white in Photoshop, to be honest with you. What we need to do is to give this punch. We need to lose that kind of fogginess which is existing in there, which you're probably not even aware is there until we put it against the one I'm about to do. The way I do it, and again, there's no rule on this. You could do it using all sorts of different tools, but going to image adjustments. Now you could do it with um, the, oh, find it in a minute. I use um, levels, but you could also do it using curves. Um, you could do it by playing with the contrast tool, but I prefer to use the levels tool because it gives me a little bit more information in this histogram as to what's going on. Now, if I drag this little slider here to the left, it's gonna just brighten it up a bit. Be careful as you do it because some of the white areas will start to burn out. So you need to make sure you don't burn out anything important. Now. I don't know if you can see, as I flick between the two, there is a subtle little difference going on already. And there's some detail missing in Ben's tie. But Chantel is the focus of the image. If I pull this slider to the right, it's going to make the blacks a bit blacker. It's going to make them darker. It has the effect of adding contrast. I'm just going to take this up a little more from the left. And possibly move this slider in the middle to the left a bit, which will just kind of lift the shadows very slightly. And if you can see that, that has added a load of punch to that image. Let's just save it up. This one is a grayscale adjusted, isn't it? And save it. There we go. So there's the grayscale adjusted. Let's just go and get the original grayscale. So this will be exactly the same as this was when we first did it. Look at the difference between those two. This one has got oomph, it's got punch, it's kind of eye-catching. Whereas this one now looks as though you're looking through a fog. Not terribly exciting, is it? It would be exactly the same method if you were going to add oomph to something which you had created by desaturating it. It don't, really doesn't matter. That's, that's kind of how I'd go about giving it some punch, giving it some lift so you don't have disappointing black and whites. There's one last thing I want to show you, and that is what I was saying about different images need to be handled differently. Here is a shot which I particularly like. We shot it last week when we were making a film about street photography. Now, if I convert this image to black and white, let's say I do it with the... I'm not going to do it with all of them because you don't need to see me watch because you can go and practice this with your own images. Let's say I convert this using the channel mixer. And I go to monochrome. Watch this guy's hand just here when I click it. Look, all the detail has just vanished out of his hand. I'm going to save this in so that, for the same reason, you can see what that image looks like. Save as, and this is um, street channel because we used the channel mixer. Now, if I, I'm just gonna close that for a minute. Now, if I go and get that image out again and start from scratch, scratch, I can't speak properly, can I? And do it by converting it in the mode, image mode grayscale, okay. 
back to RGB. I don't know if you noticed already that the detail in the guy's hand is still there. See what I mean? Different, different strokes for different folks. Now I would then use the levels <clears throat> tool and just kind of possibly brighten it up a bit. Now watch the guy's hand. I don't want that to disappear so there's no contrast, so there's no detail there at all. I don't mind if it's bright, but I don't want it burnt out. As you can see as I flick between, there is a subtle little difference going on. I want to make the blacks a bit blacker, so I'm going to pull that down to the right. And I'm going to pull the mid-tones up so they're a little bit brighter so we can see into the shadows. If I just flick between the two, if you can see it changing. These are very subtle changes that make a world of difference to how your picture looks. Let's get that one saved up for you. You don't need to watch me saving that up. I hope that has introduced you to the different ways of converting to black and white, but more importantly, made you aware of the fact that when you do convert from black and white, sorry, from color to black and white, there are things you still need to do to the image to give it punch so it's powerful, so people go, wow, that's amazing. Hope you enjoyed that. Love to see some of your images on our Facebook page. You can always click the Facebook link at the bottom of this page. Go over there, like the page, add some of your pictures, come and say hello to everyone. See you next time.